here's the full list of what we talked about today. Try your best to apply these things. No, that's not me. It's tutorial by Mark Brunt. But can you trust this and other tutorials? Are they really helpful and can you learn to draw just by watching them without actually studying art? Today we will test it. So hello, I'm Mike Arrow and I know that my English sounds like this, but I will try to make you understand me. And can you really trust YouTube tutorials? And can you learn something useful from them? I decided to try this out by creating a paint over 9 hours and only following these tutorials. So watch until the end to see the result and what are we actually going to do here? So we are going to try learning how to draw by only using these tutorials and even if you are starting from zero. But here is the problem, I have some experience in drawing of course, so I'm not starting from zero. But there is always something out of proportions or perspective or the anatomy is off in my drawings, so I expect real improvement in these cases. After this video, go and try this too and share your result in the comments. So I have an original character and I want to create a, some big drawing uh, using like all this composition, anatomy and lighting knowledge that I will get in these tutorials. So let's try. But there's the question, where can we get some good inspiration for our drawing? Let's look at some great artist works. Like, look at these guys, they are creating a real masterpieces uh, and it's good to have some inspiration from them uh, before you start drawing. And another great way to learn is by observing and analyzing the work of people who are better than you. And also ask yourself, why this artist made uh, like this lighting here but not here and why he placed the character here but not there? And all this can help you to understand how to make your art better. Okay, so I've never really drawn a landscapes before, so I know almost nothing about them, but I will try to draw everything as well as I can and only by using YouTube tutorials and without prior practice. And also I want you to know that every video I mention here will be in the description below, so you can find them easily. Also watch until the end because the drawing I end up with was really different from what you see now and I was really surprised with the result. So let's go to learning and first I want to know it's how to actually paint a landscape, so I watched this video. And here you get some basic aspects like the roll of torts. It's when you diving your canvas into a tree on tree grid and placing made objects on the scene uh, where the lines intersect. 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 Also, the scale of your character says the scale for every other element on your drawing. And if your character is big, for example, the focus is on them. And if small, the environment becomes more significant and larger. The next nice thing is that further objects should have less contrast and saturation like in a fog. But that wasn't enough, so I found this video by Mark Brunet and it covers the same basics but it goes into more detail and like how to draw grass, rocks and clouds. He also mentioned that his scene looks empty and he has the trees, so I decided to fill my canvas with these big rocks growing from the ground. It's a rocks or it's a mountains? No, I think that it's a rocks. Yes, it's a rocks. Okay, so move on to my drawing and I make here like a big felt with these big rocks and I want here to be like a moment before the fight, so she will fight with some giant maybe or golem or something like that and using the rule of thirds i placed the characters and decided to separate the sky into two parts as a clear like a blue sky on the side with our character and a darker section on the opposite side with this giant also i added more foreground rocks for better composition here and a path to guide the viewer size and this part adds a bit of story, like she comes from the behind of the scene and ready for a fight with this giant, maybe. 
One trick to make shadows on grass looks better, you can just draw some extra grass on the shadows border and it looks much better. So we're going to add some details on the rocks and I watched this video for this and here he is explaining how to draw a, a rocks. On the foreground I decided to make this highlighted outline and another part will be covered in shadow and also we will see this light as a reflected light on this rock so let's make it so. And now that looks much more better and maybe some highlight on the corners which is standing out and look at this beautiful rock. So I have now this and before we start doing and watching videos about trading I want to be sure that the composition here in my scene is nice and the best that I can do. So we are going to watch a video about how to make a good composition and I found this video and I really like it, this man here did a really good job. Uh, you can find everything you need to know to start making a professional good looking composition in your art and here is what I learned from this video. So first he talks about uh, it's a negative space. It's like uh, between your main character or object uh, in your scene you must have some space called negative space and this helps to hold the viewer eyes on the canvas and for example I made this ground on the foreground which counts as a negative space. Also this rock on the foreground can be a negative space too I think. Uh, next thing he talking about it's a flow. Uh, flow it's a what guides your eyes through the scene yes like for example uh, you start here and then you go to this ground and then to this rock which has another thing he mentioned it's a guidelines guidelines it's a uh, what actually makes this flow these are lines that give direction to your eyes through the scene and your task as an artist is to make the viewer's eyes uh, go to the point of interest on your drawing by using these guidelines. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you go here on this rock and here you go up and to the left, yes, then to this rock, which is the same as here. Also if you look at the wall scene, uh, this rocks, uh, it makes like a triangle which is another type of composition. So these guidelines makes a composition and guide our eyes in the center of this triangle. Ok, there is more of this, but let's go to the story now, which he also mentioned in his video. And the idea of a story in drawing is to give your art some more story. <laughs> like for example, if we remove this character and leave only her alone, yes, it will be more boring, like why is she staying here alone? Like we can show she's walking in this direction here, yes. But we also need to give some reasons, yes, some context. If you leave her alone but maybe draw a coastal here, far away, it looks much more interesting now. Like she's walking to this coastal to do something, like kill a king maybe, or I don't know. And we need to add some story to our art if we want it to be really interesting. He also talks about colors, which also affect your composition. It's like the placement in the scene, yes, uh, direction, which is flow, and colors. And it all makes a composition in your drawing. Uh, so she has this nice red hair, which gives a contrast between the character and the scene, because there is no more red here. And I placed her under this rock in shadow, because uh, it makes more contrast. Uh, so, if you look at this wall scene fast, yes, uh, your eyes will catch this big shadow and this big rock first. So, it can be one of the point of interest. Ok, so now we are going to render all this and make some nice beautiful light, shadows, like well, shading, because now there is no shading at all. And I found a really nice uh, good tutorial how to draw a dynamic light. And man who make this tutorial, it's a man who worked on Ratatouille, like can you imagine? And 
he surely knows something, okay? So I really recommend watch his video and use his advice because it's really, really helpful. And the base idea of dynamic light he talking about in his video, it's something like this. Okay, so here is an image he drew from his video and this image has a flat light uh, with a key light and shadow. Yes, and that's everything. Uh, it's boring. But here is the next piece and everything is much more interesting now because this piece has dynamic light. So what makes this light actually dynamic? There is a strong key light, reflected light and subsurface scattering because the light goes through the cloud, yes? And of course main shadow. So now I'm going to make my piece uh, much more better using his advices, add here some nice beautiful dynamic light because now here is what is going on here. It's like really boring so we're going to change that. So I started with this rock adding moss and a reflected light and I really like how it looks like now. Then I made uh, some white flowers and then I got an idea that changed the whole piece and made it look completely different from now. So I added normal grain, grass and now we have two different biomes in this scene like in Minecraft. Maybe I should draw Minecraft too sometime. I don't know. Okay, and maybe if there are big giants uh, this could be an old battlefield or something like that maybe. So I added some swords standing in the ground and brought floors to the grass because they can be on these knowns. Okay, so now I want to show you how to very easy change the mood in your drawing. So look at this. I changed only the sky and made the ground uh, a little brighter and that looks just really completely different now or it darker with a gloomy sky or maybe the sky will be dark and here is clear so you can see the light and shadows coming from this direction from this side it is because here is sky more clear and from all three variants i choose the first one sunny with a big ghibli cloud it's a ghibli I think Ghibli. And it looks really nice. And, and that's it, we made it. Uh, and only our final touch left, like shadows on the ground from the clouds and highlight in some places. And also watch this. If we create a new air and set it to overlay, then grab the light color around our shadow and paint uh, in the shadow, it looks much more better now. So then you can also grab uh, some blue color and paint on the darker side of your shadow to give it a blue sky tint, uh, like ambient light. And I'm not sure if anyone will notice these giants, but like everything is leading to the point where the giants are, like the rocks, cloud and other stuff. Mm. I don't know, can you notice these giants? So I'm done with my artist career. And before I show you a result uh, and this video ends, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button if you like it or dislike, I don't know, do whatever you like. And here we are. And for my first big landscape, I think it's not really bad, like I made this only by following YouTube tutorials and look at them, some references. So the main question of this video can you actually learn how to draw by only following YouTube tutorials? Uh, not really, like you will improve, it's like 100%, but if you don't practice, don't learn more deeply, uh, you can't really draw normally without these tutorials. So you must also do a lot of practice.
and maybe one day you can create a good tutorial on YouTube like these guys and all tutorials I mentioned will be in the description below so check them out and don't forget to subscribe on my channel leave a comment and thank you for watching and by the way never use chat GPT for scenario correction like I wrote a uh, three pages on English of scenario for this video then I give it to chat GPT like I want you to correct my mistakes and blah 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 and he's like okay and he cut my scenario from three pages to one and half page like what are you doing man